All right, hello and welcome everybody. This is your captain speaking. Today we are again in the Boeing 747-400 and flying into Toronto Pearson International Airport or YYZ for those in the know. So sink into serenity and embrace the experience. Look out the window and you can see the light clouds scattering the sunlight creating a beautiful winterly scene. Many of you requested a video in real time without any time lapse, so here we go. 100% real time, the whole approach, touchdown, landing roll and vacating the runway. Winter operations in aviation are anything but easy. We sometimes deal with potential icing, strong winds and reduced visibility. All of those demand our utmost attention. Luckily, the weather today is quite good. Light clouds, temperatures slightly below freezing, some cold northerly winds with about 18 knots velocity. The runway is mostly dry because the sun is shining, but the edges are partly covered with snow, as you will see later. Taxiways and apron can be slippery, that's what the ATIS reported, so we have to be careful when taxiing and parking later on. More details about winter operations in another video, go check it out. The link should pop up at the top and can be found in the description too. The Boeing 747-400, a true queen of the skies, is built to handle these conditions. With its powerful engines and robust systems to fly with the icy conditions, it's a reliable workhorse and I simply love flying her. As you may see, I am in the first officer's seat. At the time of the video, I was senior first officer on the Boeing 747-400 and Boeing 747-8. Unfortunately, I stopped flying the Boeing 747 as senior first officer and upgraded to captain on the Airbus A320 family. Well, is this really an upgrade? I'll leave that to you to decide. I, for myself, most certainly miss flying this incredible machine a lot. Did you know this about the Boeing 747-400? She's a record breaker. A Qantas 747-400 once flew non-stop from London Heathrow to Sydney in just over 20 hours, covering a distance of almost 18,000 kilometers or a little over 11,100 miles, setting a world record for a commercial aircraft. And another interesting yet special record with tragic background. The most passengers ever carried on a Boeing 747 was 1,088 people. This extraordinary event occurred in May 1991 during Operation Solomon. An LL Boeing 747-200 was used to airlift Ethiopian Jews from Addis Abeba to Israel. Due to the urgency of the situation and the humanitarian need, the aircraft was reportedly stripped of its seat to accommodate as many people as possible. It is also reported that two babies were born during this flight, increasing the count upon landing. Let's talk about some technical details of the Boeing 747. She obviously has four engines and each engine has its own hydraulic system. And those hydraulic systems provide power to the flight controls, to the landing gear and to the flaps, leading edge flaps and trailing edge flaps. We pilots select the flap positions via the flap lever, sending hydraulic power to the actuators in the wing. This extends the sophisticated triple slotted trailing edge flaps and the Kruger leading edge devices in a synchronized sequence, boosting lift for takeoff and in this case for landing. But of course, there's a backup plan. Aviation is all about redundancy. In the Boeing 747-400, the flap system is designed with redundancy in mind, meaning multiple hydraulic systems contribute to its operation for safety. The trailing edge flaps are powered by system 1 and 4, and the leading edge Kruger flaps are powered by system 2 and 3. No single system does it all. Notice that the flap system isn't alone reliant on just one hydraulic system. This distribution of power across multiple systems is a key design principle in large aircraft to ensure that a single failure doesn't lead to a catastrophic loss of control. So in every case you can always extend parts of the flaps and reduce the landing speeds. And there's even more redundancy. There's the alternate flap system. 
This is powered by electrical hydraulic pumps. These pumps are usually smaller and a lower flow rate compared to the engine driven pumps. That's why the extension of the flaps takes significantly longer than normal. But you can extend them. And that's what counts. Slowly but surely we are coming clear of the clouds and the airport comes in sight. We are approaching runway 24 left today. The runway is 2743 meters long, or which is about 9000 feet. We expect to vacate the runway at Delta 8, the second last exit to the right. Our landing performance calculation shows that the landing distance is not a problem today. We are not too heavy, we have a 7 knots headwind, the runway is considered to be dry, the braking action is reported to be good, so we have sufficient runway available for the Boeing 747-400. But now let's focus on the landing. Today the captain is pilot flying and I am the pilot monitoring. So that means he is flying the airplane and I will be monitoring him and call out for any deviations. For example, if he's flying too fast or if he's flying too slow or if he's deviating from the glide slope or localizer, etc. etc. Additionally, I will be listening and talking to air traffic control, ATC. We just now wait for the landing clearance with the latest wind. The wind information is relevant for us to know where the wind is coming from and how strong it is blowing. Today we have a 7 knots headwind and an 18 knots crosswind. And the crosswind is not bad, but it's not calm wind either. The maximum crosswind for the Boeing 747 is a lot higher, so no problem here again. But you should use the crab technique for landing. That means you point the nose slightly into the wind to maintain the runway centerline with the wings level. Just before touchdown, we'll use the rudder to align the nose with the runway, while using the ailerons to keep the wings level. The goal is a touchdown with the aircraft aligned along the runway centerline. I'm sure you have seen landings without reducing the crab angle during touchdown. And that is for sure possible, but it puts significantly more stress on the landing gear and is not the ideal way to kiss a runway, right? As we are coming closer to the runway, only minor corrections are needed to stay aligned with the runway center line. As you can see, it's rather stable. The wind is relatively steady and not gusty, which makes flying a lot easier too. You should see approaches during gusty wind conditions. A lot more work than during steady wind conditions. And now we are approaching the magical 1000 foot call out. 1000. That was the automatic call out of the 747, telling us that we are 1000 feet above the ground. This is the point where we have to be established. And that means everything needs to be ready for landing. Flaps extended, gear down, on speed, on localizer, on glide slope, landing checklist red, etc. etc. Approaching 2, 4, left. That was the RAS Runway Awareness and Advisory System. This is a system that gives us pilots audio alerts about our location on the ground or in the air, helping prevent runway mix-ups by announcing the approaching runway. 400. Almost there now. Landing clearance already received. Welcome to Toronto, ladies and gentlemen. Nice landing done by the captain, right? And as you can see, the runway is pretty much dry, just the edges are a little covered by snow. Now let's decelerate to taxi speed and vacate via taxiway Delta 8 to the right. It looks so slow already, but we definitely don't want to be too fast when turning onto the taxiway, as they can be slippery. So, better safe than sorry, right?
Now we follow the yellow line. And ATC instructed us to cross runway 248 and continue and takes away Delta on the other side. Here you can see quite well that the taxiway is not fully clear and not all snow was removed. Of course we taxi very slowly and cautiously. As our nose gear is several meters behind us, we have to judgmental oversteer. Basically, the front of the airplane is almost above the snow-covered areas, but the nose gear itself is still pretty much on the yellow line. We might seem like we are crawling, but trust me, you don't want to rush a quarter million kilogram machine around bends in this environment. Slowly and steady wins the safe taxiing. And now straight ahead again and make sure nobody is taking off or landing on runway 24 right while we are crossing that active runway. Picking up the pace a touch, ATC wants us to cross the runway quickly for the next takeoff, so let's keep it rolling. Look left, look right, with all of your might, runway's clear now, everything's just right. Now coming clear of runway 248 and then just turning right and then taxiing to our parking stand. Thanks for joining me on this wintry approach to Toronto. I hope you enjoyed the view and learned a bit today. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer them all. Until next time, thanks for watching and auf Wiedersehen.